Can one watch do everything you would need it to? Ironically, this is a question that I started to ask myself after I started collecting many different watches. In fact, my whole original goal of collecting watches was to have a watch to fit every different situation. But as I did, I kind of got more and more interested in this idea of like one watch that could just do everything. Like a dress watch that you could do water sports in, or a sports watch that was just dressy enough to be able to put on with a suit and tie. And I spend a lot of time surfing the web looking for good deals on watches, and I'm always keeping that in the back of my mind that maybe out there somewhere is one of these watches that can just do everything and I wouldn't need a watch collection anymore. And when I was looking on Joma Shop one day, I found one that just might fit that bill. Today we're taking a look at the Certina DS1 Automatic. Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch. This is a channel all about budget watch collecting. So if you're interested in watches, but you don't have a lot of money, this is the channel for you. And today we're gonna to take a look at a watch that you can get for around $350. It looks for all the world like a dress watch, but it has 100 meters of water resistance, backed up by a brand that has an incredible reputation and heritage for making sports watches that are highly capable in the water. And that brand is Certina. It's a Swiss brand that I, you know, I don't see a lot uh, talked about, and yet definitely on the gray market, there's a lot of their pieces that are available for really affordable prices. This Certina is called the DS1, and you'll see the DS designation on a lot of Certina's watches. They call it their DS concept, and it was a kind of initiative that they took to commemorate their 70th anniversary. They wanted to create a watch that really pushed the boundaries of water resistance and ruggedness and reliability. So DS I think stands for double security and in creating the original DS watch, Certina's watchmakers came up with all of these ideas to increase the water resistance capabilities, um, adding additional seals and protecting the watch from shocks and all of these different things to create what was at the time the most rugged watch available. And this was in 1959 which again was their 70th anniversary and it's been another 60 years since then. So we're talking about a brand that has over 100 years of history and heritage behind it and ever since 1959, one of the things that they have been most known for is their ability to create watches that are extremely rugged and very water resistant. In fact, Certina claims that watches that bear the DS moniker on them meet all of the applicable ISO certification standards for that particular watch. So this watch is not officially ISO certified. Certina is just saying, saying that they have gone through the procedures in-house, which means they're really serious about this watch being able to handle water sports activities, which is crazy because this watch does not look like it could handle that based on the appearance and the dimensions of the watch. This watch comes in with a 39 millimeter case. It's 12 millimeters thick, which is little on the tall side for a dress watch, but a lot of that is because of the high box dome sapphire crystal that's included with it. You're getting 48 millimeters lug to lug, and on the lugs you're getting 21 millimeters, which is going to limit your strap options a little bit. And inside you're getting an ETA 2824-2 movement, which is probably the best movement you could hope for in a watch under $400. Now, as I mentioned, I did purchase this watch from Joma Shop, and Joma Shop did supply me with a discount to help facilitate this review. So in a way, this video is kind of semi-sponsored by Joma Shop, but the only thing that they gave me was a discount on the watch, and I will be linking to Joma Shop down below if you're interested in checking this out. And I definitely recommend checking Joma Shop out. They have some absolutely incredible values, particularly on watches that might be um, a little bit older models or discontinued. You can score some incredible deals. They are a gray market retailer, so on many of their watches, you're not going to get the manufacturer warranty. Instead, Joma Shop warranties the watches themselves, usually for about two years. But for the savings that they offer on watches, this is a trade-off I'm more than happy to make. The Certina DS1 Automatic really does have a kind of split personality. It looks for all the world like a slim 39 millimeter dress watch, but inside it's a highly capable water resistant watch with a really solid feel to it. And particularly if you get it on the stainless steel bracelet, you're able to take full advantage of that 100 meters of water resistance, and you do wind up with a truly great all-around watch. Powering this watch is the ETA 2824-2 movement. This is a Swiss-made movement with a lot of heritage and history behind it. It has been battle-tested, and it has been used in a wide range of watches. It is a very standard movement. It's one that is easy to get serviced, yet it's also slim, quiet, and has a really satisfying 28,800 beats per hour 
hour beat rate, which gives it a very smooth sweeping second hand that ticks at eight times per second. It also houses a date that snaps over instantly at 12 o'clock, and ETA claims that you can expect to get between negative 12 and plus 12 seconds a day on the accuracy. However, on this particular model from Certina, I seem to be getting around plus 14 seconds a day, so it's running just outside of spec. But all in all, this movement is a big step up from your Seiko NH35s or your Miyota 8000 series movements. And because it has a bi-directional rotor, it's much quieter than the comparable Miyota 9000 series movements. So again, all in all, I think this is probably the best three-hand movement you can find in a watch under $1,000. Not only does this watch pack really impressive specifications, it also looks stunning. Probably my favorite visual feature of this watch is the bezel-less design that allows the really beautiful boxed dome sapphire crystal to rise directly out of the case and just give you a really clear open view into the dial. When looking at the watch from straight on, the watch has just an incredibly thin frame around the sides of the dial, and yet they've done some really interesting finishing work on the tops of the lugs and the sides of the lugs to give it some extra visual interest that just makes for a really beautiful looking watch. The center of the dial has a subtle but interesting texture, and surrounding it you're getting applied markers with Roman numerals at 12, 3, 6, and 9, and batons at the other indexes. And then they've gone with a 430 date impl implementation, which is typically not my favorite date position, but because it's really well color matched and integrated to the dial, it actually isn't that noticeable. Having a 430 date allows them to put the full indexes at all of the cardinal markers, 12, 3, 6, and 9, at the expense of a little bit of symmetry. The hands are simple stick hands that come to a little point at the end. They have a nice bevel on them with a little strip of loom paint going down the middle of them that helps with legibility both in the light and after dark. On the chapter ring around the dial, there is also some very small loom pips. And while this watch does have a lot of sports watch credentials, the loom is not one of them. This is loomed like a dress watch. The loom pips at the hour markers fade almost instantly and the loom on the hands doesn't last too much longer. Now, all of these polished surfaces on a black dial do make legibility a little bit of an issue. There are gonna be a lot of lighting situations, particularly indoors where the watch is going to be difficult to read. But interestingly enough, the most legible part of this watch is the second hand. It's a stark white second hand that contrasts very well against the black dial, which means you'll always be able to pick that out. Doesn't offer much use, but it is kind of a neat visual look, and I feel like it adds a little bit of sportiness to an otherwise very dressed up looking dial. The case of the watch is nicely finished. It has some very fine brushing along the sides of the watch and a very sharp transition into a polished beveled edge that runs along the top of the case. I also really like the work that they've done on the lugs. The edges of the lugs have a slight bevel on the inside so that it kind of slopes down to the stainless steel bracelet. It has some polishing there, which really helps to give the case some character. The bracelet of the watch is really beautiful and it's also really well made. It's actually a five link bracelet. The small polished accents are actually separate links that are very thin. The links articulate very well and they actually drop from slightly inside the end of the lugs. So you're getting female end links which allows the bracelet to drop down very sharply if needed. One part that is a little bit of a letdown is the clasp. The clasp is not a bad clasp, but it definitely feels like a lower quality part than pretty much everything else on the watch. The inner part is a milled scissor clasp, which is great to see, but the outer clasp itself feels like a thin pressed clasp. That again, I think kind of lets down the rest of the design a bit. It does, however, contain three micro adjusts and will serve well as a sports clasp. So while the bracelet is overall a very good bracelet, I think there are definitely gonna be times when you are gonna wanna swap it over to something like a leather strap to kind of dress it up even more. And unfortunately, that's where the choice of putting 21 millimeter lugs on this kind of makes that a little bit more difficult. Nowadays, it's not a huge problem to find good 21 millimeter straps. It's just a problem of you probably don't already have them. This is a watch that I liked enough that I did wanna get a nice leather strap for it. I found a really great Epsom leather strap from Nomad Watch Works. Um, it's available in 21 millimeters and it looks great on this watch. I've also found that 22 millimeter nylon straps, single pass nylon straps like NATO's or Perlon's really fit perfectly on this watch. I, I don't even really notice any bunching on the, uh, the lugs. So if you like that sort of NATO on dress watch look, I think this is a watch that you can pretty easily pull that off with. But overall, probably the biggest challenge that this watch has to overcome 
is that it is kind of caught between these two identities. If you get a watch that's a dedicated dress watch, it's probably gonna look a little bit re more refined. You'll probably be able to get a little bit slimmer. Most likely you won't have to deal with that 430 date placement and it would be better suited for that purpose. Likewise, if you went for a 100 meter water resistance sports watch, you're probably gonna find something that has better loom and higher legibility overall. Now, one interesting thing to note about this watch is that it does not feature a screw down crown, which is something I kind of would have expected given Certina's reputation for high water resistance. However, they claim to have put additional seals in the crown and I think I can kind of feel that, that when you're winding the crown and operating it, it does feel uh, like there's more resistance than usual and that could be because of some extra seals and gaskets in there. And generally speaking, the screw down crown is not necessary to give you the 100 meters of water resistance. It's more necessary to prevent the crown from accidentally popping out. As long as the crown is kept in place, the seals will keep the watch dry inside. Likewise, I think that a lot of people are gonna look at this design and they're not gonna find it particularly exciting. A lot of the things that really impressed me about it weren't things that I noticed until after I got to take a close look at it. I think Certina has done a really great job with the finishing and made some interesting design choices and then packaged all that together in an extremely well-built, highly water-resistant piece. But if you just look at product shots online, it's probably not something that's gonna catch a lot of people's eyes. So I think a lot of people have kind of overlooked this watch for those reasons. However, if you are looking for an affordable watch that really can pull double duty, or if you're just the kind of guy that needs a little bit of extra security and is kind of scared to be wearing around a fragile dress watch, well, then this one's a great option for you as well. Overall, this is a watch that I've been incredibly happy with. I've kept it around for a while and I don't see myself getting rid of it anytime soon. And it's one I definitely recommend checking out. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up the review for today. Thank you guys for watching. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you'd take this watch into the water. With summer around the corner here, I'm tempted to take you to the beach at least one time and just kind of test Certina's claims there, but we'll see how that goes. If you like this video, definitely invite you to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.